welcome to another episode of Diversity, Inclusion, Compassion, Kindness, and Commentary? What? That's right. I'm doing a new series of commentaries on Star Wars and its favorite leading man. I am, of course, talking about C-3PO. And it, this is going to be a 20-part series which discusses in detail uh, his origins and just his impact on masculinity in America and in the world at large. I mean, this was... Uh, he was a turning point for, for me personally. I mean, I remember being a young boy and I marveled at this golden god of masculinity when he first sashayed across the silver screen. I mean, I was hooked and America was hooked. You know, it's hard to believe that there would be a, um, all the things, a uh, Terminator, what's in it? There wouldn't be a Terminator. There wouldn't be a Robocop, Iron Giant. Uh, the Cylons, those things from the Battlestar, uh, Transformers, Wally, Data, you think there'd be a Data, there wouldn't be a Data Bender even, <gasps> Vicky from Small Wonder, there would not be a Vicky. It all began with C-3PO, and uh, it's, it's no coincidence, this is a, in the beginning, that's, remember that, the, 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 the 1977 movie, uh, uh, George Lucas's Star Wars, A New Hope, it gave me a new hope. And there's no coincidence that the opening, the first character you see, the first character you speak is C-3PO. Him and his little uh, companion there, R2-D2, they're, they're the first people you see. And here is the first line of dialogue. Ready? It's, did you hear that? They shut down the main reactor. We will be destroyed for sure. This is madness. End quote. Powerful words etched into America's consciousness. A sentence that millions of children would re repeat over and over when they played Star Wars. They would say, the force is with you. And then they would also say, we will be destroyed for for sure, this is madness. I remember saying it over and over. But when we played uh, Star Wars and then we would pick the characters, some people would be Luke, I don't know, some people would be Princess Leia, some people would be Han Solo, Chewbacca. I always chose C-3PO as my favorite uh, character. And I, I always, and I remember my father, so, listen, I, I can clearly remember my father saying to me, why can't you be normal? Why can't you like Han Solo? Uh, be a normal boy. And I, my mother, you know, she would jump to my defense. And she'd say, he's perfect the way he is. He's, this is a phase. He's totally, he's normal. You know, and you go, oh, Cecil, how can you remember a conversation like that? Well, I, it was six hours ago. That's why I remember the conversation. We still talk about this shit. So anyway, I know what you're thinking. First of all, I hear it. I, I see the emails. I see the, the uh, snide comments. You think, oh, C-3PO, he's gay. Uh, you're gay. Wrong on both accounts, okay? I am straight as an arrow. You know, uh, sorry, fellas, you know. Apologies, but uh, I am a red-blooded American male who is into women. Um, I guess I owe the women an apology, too, then. So, uh, sorry, ladies. Sorry, fellas. But me and C-3PO are quite straight, quite virile uh, men. And, uh, and people never put it together, but that little R2-D2, that's his bitch. That's his bitch. That's his girlfriend. That's the girl. That's the uh, feminine of the two. So so uh, so so leave me alone. Save your email. Save your comments. I know what you're gonna say, but I'm straight. I don't hear it. I get people say, "Oh, your voice. Oh, your voice." That's what I say. You, not me. Anyway, um, where was I? Oh, so no other character in the movie even talks until five minutes and uh, forty-two seconds into the film. So Lucas began with C-3PO. Let's do this the same. In the beginning. Where did it begin? Okay. Oh, it began at the, uh, the beginning of uh, Star Wars and no, A New Hope. No. 
you go go to the beginning where Anakin created him. That was in the what the hell was that one? Oh, the Phantom Menace. Further back, how far back? In the beginning, go to the Garden of Eden. God created man. Go further back. What? Yes, go further back when to God made Satan himself. Now, you're gonna, you know, if you go back. God made a perfect angel, and his name was Lucifer. And it was Lucifer. He had vanity and pride. And like always, pride comes before the fall. And he wanted to become God himself. And for punishment for this, God cast him out of, of, uh, of heaven, out of paradise, and into hell. Which is, a, which is a disgusting mess, but that's what he said. He'd rather rule in hell, you know, than serve in, in a God. In, in, in. So, what, what, what the hell was I talking? Somebody just texted me, and now... So anyway, what, what, then you go to fast forward to the Garden of Eden, and uh, God creates man in his own image. Perfect. A perfect being. And he's living in the garden. He wants for nothing. But is this truly life? You know, to live with no ambition, to just have, be catered to? I don't think so. It wasn't until Satan came and gave him that uh, that fruit uh, the, that, that he, they woke up. They had wisdom. And that's when they really got their humanity. And uh, George Lucas knew these Bible stories. He knew them well. And young Anakin creating C-3PO is in fact... God creating man, but uh, Lucas, in his wisdom, he he cast God and his Satan in the same the same character. God was Anakin, and Satan was Vader. He was, uh, Lucas was a better writer than whoever wrote the Bible. Let's be honest. Uh, I forgot where the hell I'm going. Somebody keeps texting me, and I'm not looking at it. What? The, oh, where was I going with this? I lost my train of thought. Oh, uh, anyway. So, well, okay, let's go to Anakin turns uh, C-3P on, uh, on in, in, uh, in the Phantom Menace. And, the, and what, it, what does CPA, uh, C-3PO first say? He says, how may I serve you? And what does the Natalie Portman girl say when she looks at him? She says, he's perfect. He's perfect. Perfect indeed. And C-3PO's perfection in 1977 began America's decades-long obsession with male perfection and masculinity. It continues to this day. It began with C-3PO. Okay? Uh, you know, I listen, it, it's, uh, I strive to be perfect like C-3PO, but uh, unfortunately I have the uh, tits in the ass of that horrible creature, uh, Jabba the Hutt. So I'm off by a mile. Uh, so uh, it's only after C-3PO meets Vader that he achieves his true humanity and is a perfect being. He turns his back on Vader, Satan, unlike what Adam did who and Eve, uh, R2-D2. Uh, he turned his back on Vader and he flees to aid those that would fight against him. And that is why C-3PO is the greatest hister hero in history and why so many men copy his mannerisms uh, to this very day. I know he affected me as a boy when I saw him. I said, yes, more. That's who I want to be. And I see you could go anywhere in America. I don't care. You, uh, parades, you'll see men acting like him. Um, uh, in the fashion industry, uh, at, tr at truck stops that dot America's highway and byways, you will see men influenced heavily by C-3PO. His impact is felt to this day. Okay, um, so I'm going to make this one kind of short. It, this is just an introductory video, and uh, I'm going to, I'm not going to go 45 minutes I could. I could go on forever about this guy. He's the best. So next video, this was a suggestion sent in by a fan, Robert Harkin. He also helped out with the uh, introduction. And uh, the next video is the Ewoks worshipped him as a golden god. When they met C-3PO, they thought he was a god, a deity. And why? Because you cannot spell woke 
without Ewok. Ewok woke. W O K E. And that's why those stupid little teddy bears knew what was what. They knew. Now you know too. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you join me in the next 19 parts of this series. God bless you.